Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Race Face TV. Tonight, we've got a special show lined up for you as we're going to go out to California where we're going to find Race Face driver Jesse Love. Hey, Jesse, how are you doing tonight? Great, and I can't wait to be back on the show here in a bit. All right, so I know I, I was going to ask you that question, what's Jesse been doing in the offseason, but you really didn't have much of an offseason, did you? Not really. We did a lot of road course racing. We did a, a lot of testing and tuning. Uh, for example, with the road course side, we did a lot of testing and uh, legends. And uh, we did some Bandolero stuff, mainly on the legend side. And we won five out of the eight races uh, running for Robert Gaten Racing, which was really cool. It's a really star racing team. And uh, they had five cars, and every single time, every single car was always a contender to win. And uh, they're out at the Florida Nationals right now. I think that actually just closed up a few days ago. <clears throat> but, yeah, they did a great job, and uh, I was just really lucky that I had a great team like them. And we also did some testing in sprint cars and midgets. And, for example, in a couple of days, we'll be testing some late models, and then the day after that, we'll be we're hopping in for our first sprint car ride. All right, so... So you actually won the Silver State Championship on the road course out in Vegas. Um, what that you wrapped that up? What just a few weeks ago? Yeah, Adam and I had a Adam Lumpkin, another race for driver. We had a really great battle, came down to the last wire, and uh, it was just a great race and a great battle. And we both had great teams, uh, both had great cars, and it was just really fortunate. Okay, so what else have you been doing in the off season outside of racing? Outside of racing, we've been uh, getting my conditioning up for getting, you know, my arms ready for some sprint car stuff because uh, first test session, those things are quite a bit heavier than the midgets. So we've been doing a lot of that and uh, doing a lot of, you know, sponsorship stuff and uh, doing a lot of interviews and things like that, getting ready for the – and getting the cars prepped too for uh, the new season and two different cars. So let's go back and let's kind of recap your 2017 season – and that started off with you winning the Junior Late Model Series there at Madeira Speedway. Yeah, that was a really eventful year. Um, it was really fun having a great team uh, like Nate Clower Motorsports. Uh, how I, every single time, you know, they were really professional, and we would always have you know different drivers um, in the TRD car, which is really cool because it helped myself adapt to different teams and different cars and things like that. This year, we have a new car, and I will be testing in a few days. Uh, I just can't thank them enough. I'm really lucky. I'm really fortunate for that. Now, besides the junior late models, you were also running in the HPD Midget Series, that Western Series, and you were the first person ever to win all three championships in the same year. Yeah, that was uh, another eventful season. There, we kind of... Uh, had a lot of nail biters, especially at the last race for for the Treble Crown um, at Vegas, where we got second in qualifying and we started and they pulled an eight, so we're start or no, yeah, so we're we pulled a nine, so we're starting eighth, and uh, it happened almost every single time. So we kept starting eighth, and then we had to work our way up, and then on the last day there was a wreck in front of me that was uh, a little too much for me to avoid, and we tapped the wall, had a right front go down. And then we just, you know, finished the race out. But unfortunately, we didn't finish where we wanted to. And uh, congratulations to Annie on the win. But it came down, I think, to like the last three to seven points was the final um, buffer there. And that was just a really great season. I had a great team. Can't think everybody on that team would have. You know, they busted their butts day in and day out. And I was just a wheel holder there. I mean, I, that was a really great, great season. I can't wait to do it again. So share with me a little bit about the differences between running that midget on the asphalt and running that midget in the dirt. Yeah, so on the asphalt, it's a lot more uh, momentum because obviously uh, on dirt, you know, you're always sliding around and banging off cushions and stuff like that. But on asphalt, uh, it's I feel like the asphalt races to me were harder than the dirt races because everybody was were always so equal. And uh, the last race, I think the top ten were within uh, about a tenth or so. So that was really cool. And every single time we would always have our hands full. And 
and then on dirt, it's a lot more kind of finesse and make sure you don't let the car slide off the track, but make sure it stays, you know, around the berm, around the cushion, or and if you're trying to throw a slider, make sure you don't put somebody in the fence because that's not very cool. <laughs> so between the two of them, which one do you like the most? Do you like running on the pavement or do you like running on the dirt the most? All right, so let's just get something out of the way here. Dirt's a lot, a lot more fun usually. All right. But when you have a, a really stout field, which like the last race where the uh, what where the East Coast came to the West Coast, we had the uh, uh, Cyrus Cup Fall Classic. That was really cool, and uh, that was definitely one of the most fun races of the year. So it's kind of a toss up. Yeah. All right. So let's now fast forward. Let's talk a little bit about your 2018 season and what that looks like. I know that you've already been saying that you've you've been testing a new midget car. And, you, and you've been testing a little bit in the sprint car. So uh, I know that you're going to be running junior late model, the midget, and the sprint car. And you're going to be, of course, going back to defend your junior late model championship. So let's, yes. let's first, let's talk about that BCRA midget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for the BCRA midget, that's, that was, uh, you know, do the grace to go out there. Uh, I can't thank everybody at BCRA enough and Del Morris. Uh, we had a great board meeting and I was just really lucky and uh, thankful to the people around me. Uh, they developed myself as a driver uh, to where we were able to get a special age waiver uh, for six races where um, basically <laughs> I will um, run like a regular, like every person, but I will start, um, I'll start in the back. And then basically for this, we're going for not as much wins, but as much we're going mainly for taking that race and making the most out of it to get experience so that we go hopefully in a few years but if we go national then we can be ready um but i just can't thank del morris enough for you know making for and all the other board members for making that decision because that's just amazing and really warms my heart so you are the youngest person ever to be able to run full time in that in that division but let's talk about those first races when you've got to go to the back of the pack and start um, when does that, when does that go away? I mean, if you, if you, if you run the first three or four races and you're competing and you're, you know, you're moving up front, is that, is that particular, um, I guess, I don't want to call it a penalty, but is, is that going to go away? So that was the warning what I know, um, and I might be wrong, but I believe that that doesn't make a difference. And I, and I think that at six races and, uh, no matter what, we'll start in the back. And I'm perfectly okay with that because I know there are people that are going to disagree with decisions um, and to make it as much of a uh, decision that I can make the most of it um, and learn the most, it will make uh, you know a huge difference um, in my driving ability. And a uh, little guy named, I know the name, Doug Borders, he always says, you know, anybody can win from the front, but you got to go from the back to the front to learn how to win uh, well. So... Uh, yeah, that would be great, and uh, thanks again again to Del Morris. <laughs> so let, let's talk about the power difference between the HPD midget and this particular midget car. Is it, uh, I know when I ran into you at Indy and I asked you that question, you, were, you had a big old smile on your face. So I'm, I'm gathering that the power is a tremendous much more, uh, if you would, in this, in this midget car. Yeah, so it's like, I think it's triple, I believe, the horsepower. And uh, Trace Van Dyne out of uh, Van Dyne Engineering in Huntington Beach and makes some great motors. And wow, that thing puts you back in the seat. And uh, at Web Adventure, it'll lift the front end off the ground, especially when the track's hooked up. So, yeah, and that's one thing, right? And then the next thing is that it's so much lighter than the HPD midget. So now that, now that it's lighter, the power to rate ratio is even greater and even more increased. So everything about them is just more twitchy, and it's really, if you can drive a midget, you can drive anything. So we definitely put the test there. Uh, that, that, that's kind of a surprising to me that the car is lighter. So now we're going to talk about the big car. We're going to talk about the Hunt Magneto Sprint Car Series. And this is going to be your first time in a sprint car uh, this year. So you're looking forward to that, and what have you learned in testing so far? Yeah, so, so far in testing, I've learned that I need to get my arms built up a little stronger. We've definitely been working on that and our first race in a few days here. So uh, that'll be great. And 
the main thing I noticed right off the bat was how much uh, how much more power there was and how much more uh, you know how much heavier it is and it'll slide forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and then even under even when I was just idling around for the first time I was like wow this is crazy so uh, I can't wait to get out you know on the track with that and uh, that'll be amazing and I can't thank um, Joe Hunt and everybody else all the drivers uh, you know for let me race in that amazing series because I can't wait to go and learn different tracks. Well, that sounds pretty cool. I saw a couple of films or some video, I should say, of you out there testing. So that first race is when now? Uh, this Friday or this, Saturday, sorry. This Saturday. All right. So we're going to be looking forward to that. We'll get everybody updated on that. So I know that you've got some new sponsors coming on board for 2018. Uh, I know that k and filters and that's that's got to be pretty cool. Yeah, so uh, so far for Canon filters, um, that's just amazing. And uh, we came, we basically came out of PRI, you know, uh, with a sponsorship from, and that was really cool. I can't thank everybody at PR or uh, KNN enough. It really means a lot, and um, just to have such a great racing, you know, team, and, it, and it, it's really cool because um, because they race too. It's really cool to see somebody at that level operate as well as they do. Now, what about 5150? Are they going to be back with you for 2018 on that late model? Yeah, so 5150 is definitely back. Got their hat on right now and got some merch that just got shipped in. So that's really cool. And uh, yeah, I just love that company so much. And it's really cool. Uh, you know, I love their model, Love the Madness. And then Carlos Vieira, you know, he's a great guy. And I really love, you know, how he works because there'll be some times where I'm at the same track as him. And even though we're not racing the same race, we'll be racing the same car. So I can go over and ask him for tips, or I can go over and just see how he operates with his team. And it's so stout, and it's amazing to see how somebody at that level operates. And, uh, you know, another thing that really is amazing about him is that the Race for Autism campaign. And that's basically where they take a portion of every bottle that they sell, if I do on 50, which is quite a bit. And they take it and they put it towards um, children that are people that are living with autism. So that's really cool because you know it just shows how much hum or humility he has um, inside of him. And I know, and that's actually tough when you know you are you know you're such a you know great driver like he is. So it's really cool to see somebody that gives back as much as he does. Um, and always, and like you said or like you saw, probably most likely at the Daytona 500 or I was on Brad Keselowski's car. You know, always pay it forward. So that's really cool, and I can't wait to have be back on board with 5150 and live the madness. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So let's talk a little bit about, if you want to now, let's talk a little bit about the Toyota Driver Development Program. Yeah, so last year we were kind of just getting their system and everything like that, and uh, now this year we're um, filling us off with TRD. It'll be on the suits and be on the cars, so that's really cool. And uh, yeah, basically so far, we're just keep building our relationship with them, which is very cool. I can't thank uh, Trent from TRD and, uh, and J Mr. Giz from TRD, which is really cool because they are such a great, great, great racing team. And to know that, uh, you know, they even know the name Best Valve is just the coolest thing in the world to me. Well, let me ask you one last question here. Do you ever pinch yourself and think, oh my gosh, look at everything that's going on, everything that I've been able to accomplish and I'm just turned 13 years old. Yeah, so uh, basically what that tells me is I got to keep working so I don't look just, you know, just like somebody that can, you know, drive one car where they can't drive the next. And um, a lot of that, I've just been a, I've been a really lucky kid, you know, and I got to thank the man above and all the people around me that, you know, make my life amazing, you know, and I uh, wake up every day, count my lucky stars and, uh, or every night, sorry. Um, but I just can't thank everybody around me that, you know, basically lets me live my dream. Well, Jesse, you, you know, I can tell you this, you have a tremendous amount of talent. You've earned everything that you've got. We want to extend to you our best wishes for the 2018 season. And uh, we're definitely going to have you back, you know, a few times through the year so we can keep the viewers up to speed. Anything else you want to close out with? Well, just uh, thank you everyone for watching uh, Race Face, and it's, uh, you know, amazing how I can have, uh, you know, a fan base like I do right now, and hopefully we'll be back on the show here pretty soon, and I'll see you guys soon. All right, well, there you got it. Jesse Love from out of California. I'm going to tell you what, he's one to keep your eye on. This kid's got so much talent. 
We have saw it in 2017, and I expect nothing less in 2018. So I want to thank all of you for being with us tonight, and uh, make sure to keep up with us. Make sure to go like Jesse's Facebook page, and also check out his new website at jessieloveracing.com, and we'll see all of you back here next week. Thanks for tuning in. If you're a fan of the show, make sure to hit the like button, and if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, then click on subscribe. Want to catch up on some episodes that you might have missed? Then tap on demand. That's it for this week, and as always, go out and support racing at your local track.